Call to order the Township of Hamilton Committee meeting for Tuesday, September 4th, 2018. Please stand for the flag salute. Judy, would you like to lead us? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by publication in the press of Atlantic City on January the 5th, 2018 and the Atlantic County Record on January the 10th, 2018. Mr. Gishard. Present. <coughs> Mr. Kurtz. Here. Mrs. Link. Here. Mr. Silva. Here. Mayor Shanker. Here. We have a moment of silence for private reflection, and please keep in your thoughts and prayers Catherine Gatto, who's the grandmother of our freeholder Amy Gatto, and her family. Thank you. Um, early public comment? Uh, no one has signed up. No one? Uh, discussions, formal action may be taken. Penica land donation request. Mike, you want to comment on that? Or Phil? Yes, sir. Um, we received a letter from Dennis Levinson, our county executive, asking if we had any comments or interest in this land ourselves. The owners have offered to donate it to the county, um, but he wanted to know what our thoughts were on it as far as would we be interested in it or would we recommend the county take it or none of the above i guess He's, there's a letter in your packet from him yes and there's also a sample of a resolution that uh fred acres put together he um supports the the purchase or the actual the acquisition of this land so by the county permanent open space well i think i think his resolution says by the county yes Yes. And, uh, it filled, who else owns most of that land along that stretch? There's a lot of other land in there that was. The, the balance of the land in that section of Cologne Avenue, that, that big purchase the county made several years ago, this is like the only out parcel. Oh, so this is right yeah, this in is, the middle of it. It's sort of right in the middle of, of what they own along that frontage, yes. <clears throat> um, and I know that most of the land is mapped as wetlands. Yeah, I could say according to that, it does look yeah. good they'd have a hard time putting a house in there. Correct. Okay. Thank you, sir. And it's 35 acres. This is a 35 acre piece of land? Yes. And we receive a little over $4,000 a year in taxes right. off of it as it sits. So this is not this is a, a tract of land that could not be developed. Well, the Pinelands won't give them approval to build a house. Okay. They, they wanted to build one house, and they've already done thirty thousand dollars worth of studies, and they're looking at sixty thousand more in studies with no guarantees. Anybody did, have any questions? Did they say anything about the? Uh, um, the sewer system that they would have to put in it would be thirty thousand. There's there's nothing in here about that that I saw. No, okay. Because generally it has to be something that uh, yeah recycles and the the latest is at thirty thousand dollars for that. <clears throat> I, I just have a general comment. I really don't understand how the state expects people to. To want land, there seems to be no advantage in having the land. They can't use it, and yet they, they've got to pay taxes on it. it doesn't seem like a, a reasonable situation. <clears throat> Were they made aware of the fact that it could be a problem with the pine lands to begin with? This this isn't a dealing between us and, and them. They they are actually communicating with the county. Um, I don't know what their conversations were about that. Uh -huh. But it would impact us tax-wise. If yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
um, but it's not a, a, it's they're not the county's not asking us we're okay with them taking it over we don't want it they're gonna take it am I correct well I think they're asking for, well, let me Yeah, let's see if, if we may be interested in preserving the land yeah, as he described. He doesn't say in his letter. Sure. I mean, they've asked the county. I think he's looking for comments for us that we would support their acquisition or wouldn't support it. If they stop paying taxes, we may end up owning it. Anyway. Exactly. If it goes to foreclosure or whatever, and we end up having to be the recipients of that piece of property anyhow, yeah, exactly. Well, even if you didn't, John. Yeah. You stop paying taxes for those properties that you decide to remove from the right. It's just going to be a limbo. Yeah. They'll own it, but delinquent taxes will accrue. Yeah. And that affects your uh, budget a little bit because you have to reserve for uncollected taxes. Right. And uh, what would their um, downfall or downside be if they didn't pay taxes and they went to foreclosure isn't that a strike against them as well i can't really answer that i don't know if that reflects your credit rating or not yeah i'm not sure no no not sure well, wouldn't you would think it would if your property has to go to foreclosure because you didn't pay taxes my goodness i would i would suspect it if the county doesn't Makes do sense, something right. with it from preliminary numbers here the guys that family has spent close to a hundred thousand dollars both in the purchases of all those parcels and in other fees i mean it's unfortunate because he wanted to build a dream house there but the dream isn't going to come true um i wonder what position the pine lens has on this stuff or whether they have any position at all Will they put people in this kind of situation Well, it's uh, it has to do with the uh, the uh, uh, whether it's buildable or not, and and whether it's wetlands. If it's wetlands, well, the map indicates right here that a significant amount of it is wetlands. Yes. Yeah. And wetlands, uh, you know, provides the water for you and I because uh, of the well. The, that is a, not the well, but the water reservoir. That uh, Cohansi reservoir. The aquifer. The, uh, yeah. Do we know who this was purchased from. No. Sort of. It sort of it sounds like the uh, when you were in Flo uh, years ago, the Florida. Deal where you buy some uh, property and it was all swampland. <laughs> I, th I think they done a lot with that swampland since, but maybe if they hold on to it, that something will happen. So the county just wants to know if we have any objections to them taking this land. Are they, is it this land being donated to the county? Is that the process? Okay, so. Can we make no we need a formal action in order for this to uh, go one way or the other? You do. Mm -hmm. I have no objection to them, uh, the county taking it. We want to move to uh, allow the county to take it? Or to... Yeah, I sure. Think we I have a motion. I'll Not second it. We have a second. Yes. Sorry, I'll Roger. Yes. Um, all right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, public hearing adoption of ordinances a ordinance 1884-2018 an ordinance appropriating six hundred and fifty thousand dollars and authorizing the ensuance of a sixteen six hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred dollar in bonds or notes to the township of hamilton for capital improvements or purposes authorized by to be undertaken by the township of hamilton county of atlantic in new jersey uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, Mike, you want to give a little overview on this first before I open it up to the public? Yes, sir. The, this is a bond, or a bond ordinance that's being funded by the proceeds from the developer's bonds, 
um, the bonding company and the township have come to an agreement of 650000 which is the amount of this bond. The money would be used to do improvements in Tavistock. Okay. All right. Well, and that was done because, I'm sorry, Art, because that was done because we, we can't just open a separate account they, for those funds. They would not let us set up the trust account yeah. okay. under state law. Yeah. All right. I'll we'll open this up to the public. It's a public hearing. Anyone have anything they'd like to say? Motion to close public portion. Second. Second. Motion to second to close public for, for uh, motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. A motion to approve that ordinance. Second. Second. We have a motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. 1884-2018. Um, Rita, why don't we do a roll call vote, please? Okay. Mr. Gishar? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. <clears throat> so just so we're clear, this is now, we have the vehicle for the money. The notices are going, they've gone out. And now they are going to, we have our day in court, so to speak, on the 21st of September. Yes. What you just adopted is a vehicle to appropriate the money so that it can be spent for the road improvements inside Tavistock. Right. Okay. And it's a vehicle that was required by your bond council and by the state. Um, the hearing, so that you all know, and I said it last time, I want to say it next time, to approve the settlement for the Tavistock bond litigation is September 21st at 2.30 p.m. at the Atlantic County Civil Courthouse on Bacharach Boulevard um, in Judge Savio's courtroom. Great. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, number five, introduction of ordinances, public hearing to be held September 17, 2018. A, ordinance 1885-2018, an ordinance amending Article 2 of Chapter 66 of Code of, ha of the Township of Hamilton providing for annual salary increases for certain employees. Mike, could you give us a little background on this, please? Yes, sir. If approved, this ordinance would provide um, the same increase that was given to the Teamsters to the non-union employees. This refers only to non-union. It's $600 flat plus 2%. The first year, the second year is 2%. Okay. Anyone want to move the I'll move it. I'll second. Second. Ordinance. introduction of the ordinance? I'll move it. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Um, <clears throat> do we need a roll call for this, Bob? It don't, but I'd like to. Yeah, all right. Rita, please. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and introduced. Thank you. B, ordinance 1886-2018, an ordinance amending Exhibit A, Section 1, Article 2 of Chapter 66, Maximum Salaries. I would assume this has to do with the same? Yes. There are certain positions where the salary maximum needs to be increased to, okay. to accommodate the 2%. Very good. I'll move that ordinance. I'll second. second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, roll call vote, please. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and introduced. Thank you. Uh, six, award of bids, rejection of bids, contracts, change orders. Resolution A, resolution awarding a contract for ambulance remount of ECI emergency vehicle specialist through, Hamil through, ha yeah, through Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program in the amount of $130,614 and the unpublished options in the amount of $27,751.19 as recommended by the CFO purchasing agent. <clears throat> Mike? The um, rescue squad approached us this time around and asked to do a remount of one of their existing units instead of purchasing new. New is about two hundred and twenty thousand. Right. This is going to come out to about one hundred and sixty thousand. Okay. Um, one of their concerns is that the new ones don't fit in their shop for doing maintenance. So this, but the existing ones do. So this would be practically brand new when we get it back. Okay. Um, and it'll fit inside their shop, their their garage door, um, for service, and it saves money. And it saves money. Yeah. So if we refurbish an ambulance like this, what's the the life? How long before this has either got to be redone again or replaced? I, 
probably it would be right back in the normal cycle. We have six ambulances and we do one so every other year. So it could be for this particular years. one. Okay. All right. It's always good when we save money. Uh, the question on, on uh, one item here. It says $27,000 uh, in unpublished options. options. <laughs> I'm just curious, what does that mean? Are those custom things that we require that, that um, don't have a... Right? Oh, it, well, exactly. Published options are ones that were bid specifically. Yeah. Unpublished are options that are available that weren't in the bid. We actually had, since it was over 6000 we had to get quotes even on, on their quote. So it, we did satisfy the state bid laws with that. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, award this bid uh, to uh, Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program in the amount of uh, one hundred and thirty thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars. Second. Oh. With the on. Uh, oh yeah, with the amount of twenty seven thousand seven hundred and fifty one nineteen, as recommended by the CFO purchasing agent. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Rita, could you do a roll call for this, please? Mr. Gishar. <coughs> yes. Mr. Kurtz. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Silva. Yes. Mayor Shanker. Yes. Oh, yes, and Karen. B, resolution authorizing purchase of Moorbark Beaver M15R wood chipper from Garden State Bobcat through the Educational Service Commission of New Jersey. Co op number 65 MCES CCPS bid number 151608. Mike? Yes, this is for the Public Works Department. It's a wood chipper. It's a large wood chipper. Um, price is $67,834.25. It was budgeted in the operating budget. Correct. One yeah. thing, is that much larger than anything you have at the current time? Brett? Yes. Safety. Since it's so much bigger now, and of course there's always that risk, only certain people can operate it? We're replacing the old chipper because of safety. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm mainly concerned about individual safety, you know, and, and making sure that, what is, does this have guards on it or anything, or shutoffs, or everything, right? Good. Does this increase our capacity to uh, accomplish the mission? Yeah, it's an MR-15, come on. Like, would we would we keep the uh, old wood chipple, or can we put that on .gov or something? Get rid of that. I think we want to yeah, just. Oh, okay. Great. And it still has a lot of value. Good. Contract would probably it up. Okay. Good. Thanks, Brett. I'll move that uh, mayor authorizing the purchase of the Moorbark uh, Beaver uh, M M R M fifteen R wood chipper. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Rita, can we do a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishar? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? <clears throat> yes. All yes and Karen. Thank you. C, resolution rejecting all bids for chiller replacement bid 2018-07, as recommended by CFO purchasing agent. Mike? Yes, um, our chiller bids, we open bids, um, and Unfortunately, none of the bidders included the Iran disclosure, which says you don't do dealings with Iran, and that's a fatal flaw under state law or state court cases, I guess. What disclosure was that? The Iran. The Iran disclosure. Disclosure. Yeah. Not doing business with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. You're going to put it re back put out back the bid out. again. Yep. Okay. Right. I'll move it. We have a I'll second it. Motion is second for the resolution. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. The ayes have it. D, resolution authorizing the purchase of Pro Phoenix Software from SHI International Corp from state contract 89851 in the amount of $71,256.80 as recommended by the Emergency Services Advisory Board. Michael? Yes, sir. This purchase is software, computer software. Um, it ties into our Pro Phoenix system that we already have for the police. Um, and it enables them to do a lot of the re required report writing. It allows our staff, our fire inspectors and fire officials to go out and find, well, if the terminal is a hazard in a building, 
they can mark that, and then when the firemen are responding to a call, they can come up, it'll come up on their computer that, hey, this building that you're responding to, you have this hazard there, be aware. So it, it provides safety to the firemen as well. Um, so it's... Uh, as, I, as I recall, we did have some savings because part of this is common to the software that police use. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yes, it'll be a, and it'll be, the installation will be a lot easier too. Yeah. I'll move that resolution, Mayor. A second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, could you do a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Thank the, you. Those Seven. funds were in the operating budget as well. Pardon me? I'm sorry. Those funds were in the operating budget as yes. well. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Uh, number seven, consent agenda. I'll uh, make a motion to approve items A and B and items D through G, pulling off item C for discussion. Okay, I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to approve all but C. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, we want to bring C up for discussion. Approval, the request, approve the request of Mays Landing Athletic Association to place a eight by 40 shipping container at Underhill Park. Uh, Mayor, the, the reason this came up is some of the committee members were uh, concerned about uh, a, a, a unit that size, like a tra trailer body, uh, sitting out at the uh, park and, uh, and for, for viewing, for, for looking across the field or so and looking at that unit. Our concern was that maybe it needs to be uh, shielded with uh, some type of fencing and a, a little bit of... Uh, uh, shrubbery or something so that you're not looking at a container sitting out like that it might lend to down the road other groups or organizations want to do the same thing mm -hmm. so we would like to make sure that it starts out right uh, another item is that the uh, Mays Landing Athletic Association had a fundraiser uh, to enable them to purchase this so it's not costing the township the funds to purchase the item However, uh, uh, and uh, Brett Knoll, I spoke with him about it. He's aware of it. Mike is that uh, uh, down uh, at the time that they get this item, then uh, they could uh, put some kind of fencing up. Uh, the township maybe could put some kind of fencing up. We understand that the location has to do with the fact that there was a shed there previously, and there's electric to that site. So it would be easy, not a big job to uh, just make electric come in for the, for the shed. Part of the reason my understanding is a lot of the equipment that the uh, sports groups have, especially helmets and some padding and things, the law has changed now due to the concussion uh, rules and regulations and uh, that made, rendered a lot of that equipment like football helmets unusable and they had to purchase all new items. Uh, and the, the price is up on that equipment and they're concerned about safety. Uh, this container would be very secure to my understanding. And I think it's something we definitely should do with the uh, understanding that it needs to be screened and maybe some landscaping or something to make it look softer. Perhaps they could use the fencing for a banner or something like that to advertise something they're doing or a game coming up. But that's my understanding from the MLMA. Well, it's my understanding also that they're looking at either buying a new one or slightly used. Correct. Which probably mean it's in good shape. So it's not mm -hmm. like you have to uh, over decorate it unless you're just going to put some uh, different, uh, as John said, drawings or whatnot. Or something. I guess we don't have any <laughs> standards with regard to where this is placed or what it looks like. Um, I'm sure people are going to use their, their good judgment, but uh, maybe that's an area we ought to give some thought about because this can happen at our other fields and it can happen again here. Um, I would like to add that uh, I know Lenape Park had three or four of these trailers, which eventually they had to get rid of. And they were good storage areas, but sometimes over time they begin to leak so that would uh, the maintenance of these trailers would be very important because you wouldn't want things the uh, them to leak especially with the roof and um you know it they're not really attractive as you say there it needs a little decorating but i agree yeah um 
like to know where they're going to put it, how it will affect the aesthetics, and you say that it's going to go where the where the other shed, shed was. was. Yeah, yeah. Where, where that, is that, John? Uh, Brett, that site exactly is by the dugouts. Yeah, down lower, you know, not the practice field. So it's not obtrusively right out in front of your the, the it's stand. Not going to cover. Where, where does he? Oh, okay. Right yeah. next to the field. Yeah, it sounds like uh, with the cost of their equipment and what they need and the fact that this is a secure unit and we don't have to buy anything and they're replacing a shed that was there, there is some concern from all the committee that, it, that the term used was shed city. We, we want to try to limit uh, the uh, a number of individual sheds going out, but something like this would be able to actually store all of their equipment to my understanding all the new equipment that they have and some of the equipment that they carry over uh, Where they just don't have room for storage. Do we know if they they looked into other options. I mean, I've seen some huge sheds uh, My son bought a large one for his house. It's big It's almost like one of these not you know like one of these containers and I don't think I don't know what they're gonna pay for this uh, storage container but it has a roof on it and it's shingles and uh, there may be some uh, uh, benefit to what Judy said about the possibility of upkeep and maintenance and leakage and whatnot, but if it's a new one and they're using these, where are they using these? On the docks? That's where they, I mean, they come off mm -hmm. the ships and they store oh, ships. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't a, uh, a, a uh, rusted old thing you'd get from a junkyard. They're getting it from a container <laughs> company. <laughs> They did, yeah, so but over time. It. They're going to paint it to match everything else. Yeah, and they're, they're going to paint it to match anything else around the, the field. Is the location going to block uh, the views of, of people? I don't think so where it's at, but Brett. Are you happy with the location, Brett? <coughs> I'm happy with it. Probably the best thing to put it at that site. Okay. Absolutely. It needs to be painted. Probably the colors, maybe the logo on it. Mm-hmm. Easy, you're right. And then they'd obviously rather have a shed, but I think it's just the money. They're getting more space yeah. for the money. It's Fred, is that an area that floods? Yeah. To build it up higher, because I remember that area always when you got heavy rainfalls. Mm. Yeah, that would be a problem. Um, the, the other thing is uh, that. Um, it does provide a very safe way of locking things up. That's the good benefit of that shipping the cans are really hard to break in. Yeah, and since they had the break in at the <laughs> snack bar and the. Yeah. It probably provides some advertising capable. Yeah, where they would. Yeah, I which think. Which could so. pay for the landscaping. Yeah. So I provide some what? Advertising. Oh. Mm -hmm. So they so are they looking for us to do some landscaping? To I think I think they are. Yeah, they said that they're they will fundraise for the uh, pr purchase of the items so the township doesn't have to do that. But hooking up the electrical in order to make sure it's code up to code or whatever it is, it's like I said, the electrical is already there. It just that would have to be moved into the unit. And and maybe uh, maybe some landscaping, some light landscaping, something you know. But I I, I don't know. It looks like our choices are, are that they they need to do certain things uh, that will be agreed upon afterwards. It's not going to just be the container is not going to go out there until agreements are in place about what's doing what and who's doing what kind of a thing. Where are they storing this stuff now, John? Uh, people are taking them home. Coaches are taking them home. Coaches are using their own sheds. Uh, they have a little bit of room in the uh, in the building that used to have the bathrooms in it before they built the new bathrooms, but it's very very small. It can't can't even begin to take what's needed, and they believe it could be shelved out and uh, and uh, really be a good uh, area to uh, store stuff securely. We uh, you mentioned <coughs> replacing uh, many of the helmets with ones that are going to meet the new standards. And obviously, it will be a lot more expensive. I don't know what the ultimate value of the uh, the inside of this trail might be, but is it worth considering 
having some kind of uh, security, a camera or something? I don't know. Is this in view of any of our cameras? Yeah. Um, well, I really wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, can we make sure it's in view? Someone will have to be watching it. <laughs> John, are they are they in a uh, you know it's football season, so I assume a lot of that equipment has been handed out. So are they in a real hurry for this? Can we uh, probably can we take a moment to yes, take a look where yes, they want can, it? And, yeah. They're kind looking of at formulate a plan before yeah, we jump in. I agree. Yes. And we might also consider. You mentioned the possible advertising. Well, we we know that certain members of the community are very, very much concerned about signs and signage appearance, and in fact, I guess we all are to some extent. And maybe that's something we ought to think about too. What, what standards would need to be met for the advertising? We have a sign ordinance, don't we? Yeah, we do. I believe what the, uh, the sign would be for uh, to, to recognize sponsors who have helped uh, with the uh, sports group, that kind of thing. So they're, they're not permanent. They're more temporary based upon who the sponsor is kind of a thing. They have them around the, uh, out the perimeter of the, uh, some of the fencing at the fields uh, to recognize sponsors for their uh, support. Yeah, I think we address that in their agreement. I think this, we, I think there's a section signed. Yeah, in, the it, okay. in their in their use of fields agreement. Yes. Well, I I know there was a, a problem with um, who is beneficiary of these signs. In other words, if someone uh, put some money towards having the signs there, who 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 gets it? Just the Mays Landing Athletic Association. Yeah. I can tell you, I'm a sponsor. Yeah. I had a sign here for many years, and the check was always to the MLAA. Okay. Do we have any pictures of these storage sheds? No, but I could, I can get one if you want. <coughs> Why don't um, I can get some. I, I'd be willing to accept a motion to table this for now, so we can get some more information, and have a conversation with them, and see see where we want to go with this. Yeah, I can meet with them. Uh, there, it seems like there's just too many questions and I agree and I want to make sure we're all on the same page before we do this okay. see how we can we need we, a picture if, of the if shed they need our help what do they yeah, need we understand Site -less and location showing where it's going I know they're stuff. building homes out of these things too okay trailers and whatnot so I mean I'm not opposed to it I just want to see what it looks like and and you know where it's going to set and how we're going to deal with it I would move to table it then and take uh, mayor's suggestion I'll second it yeah. Motion and second to table. Uh, item C. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, we're going to move on to personnel. A. Resolution appointing Mike Brandenberger as a part time <coughs> communications officer for the police department at 1592 an hour, effective, to be, effective date to be determined, contingent on successful completion. Of background process. Mike, you have any comments on this? Uh, only that he's a returning employee. Um, he worked for us for a number of years and retired and sp spent his six months away, and now he's eligible to come back and he wants to be a part time dispatcher. So, okay. So Sounds good. We're glad to have the re resolution. I'll is, second it. Is this an as need position or it's, yeah. this is. Don't okay, call. I see. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we have a motion and a second, did I hear? Right. Yep. Thank you. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Roll call. Roll call. Rita, please. Mr. Gishar? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Glad to see Mike come back. I'm glad to see him back. He's a very valuable individual. Yeah, very mm -hmm. good at his job. Well, the answer is yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Thank you. B, resolution appointing Patrick Haggerty. To de as dep deputy tax collector at $55,000 annually, effective date to be de determined, contingent upon successful background check and physical drug screening. Eligible for a $3,000 increase after six months upon successful performance evaluation. So, Mike, Mike this is uh, to do with someone who left the yes. position. Yep. Yes, the vacated position. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, can we have a roll call vote, please? 
Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. C, resolution indemnifying the listed police officers in the case versus Barbara Martin versus, case of Barbara Martin versus Hamil Township of Hamilton. Federal Civil Case 18 CV 11931 RBK AMD. Mike, would you like to uh, comment on this? The, um, there are a number of officers that were named in, in a lawsuit, a federal lawsuit, and the, um, each one is entitled to their own attorney at the township's expense under state law, um, or we can choose to indemnify them. Um, the chief has looked at the circumstances surrounding this and is recommending the indemnification. I support it completely. Thank you, Bob. So what are the advantages of indemn uh, township indemnification versus uh, individual? Uh, I guess it's a lot cheaper. That isn't. It, it, it will be. It's up to the GIF commissioner as to how they handle assigning counsel. Um, I can tell you in the past, oftentimes one attorney has been appointed to represent the group unless there became a divergence of positions at some point during the litigation. <clears throat> I've personally reviewed this complaint, and although that's a possibility, I don't think it's a probability. And I drafted the indemnification ordinance many, many, many years ago, and it's consistent with state law, and it's consistent with being a good employer and it's consistent with standing by your police department and I believe you're required to provide it so there's not really a choice and therefore I support it okay thank you we have I a motion move, I move to accept the resolution second we have a motion and a second uh, Rita can we have a roll call vote please Mr. Gishar? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Thank you. Nine approvals, minutes of August 20th, 2018, regular meeting. Meeting. Second. We have motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. B, payroll and bills, bill list totaling $4,827,331.19. So, so moved. moved. We have a motion second. and a second. Rita, can we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishard? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Reports, Mr. Administrator. Yes, sir, Mayor. One item I'd, I'd like to add to my report is the um, we received notice that um, the township was successful in its grant application. Um, for fiscal year 2018, the local freight impact fund program providing $225,000 for the repaving of Cotillion Boulevard. Great. Um, we put it last year and we got the grant. So um, I was I talked to Kevin Dixon today. He's the one that applied for it. Person. He's working on it. So it's fantastic. For those of you who don't know, Cotillion Boulevard is the entrance, the main thoroughfare through the industrial park. Mm -hmm. office, so. so that's good. My wife can stop complaining about that road now. <laughs> Mr. Solicitor. I've got a question on uh, <coughs> the administrator's report. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, we talk about, uh, oh, where is it? It had to do with the electrical rates uh, and the difference in those rates in our. Um, How about the. Uh, uh, where did I put it? <laughs> finance department report. I guess it was, but the rates seemed to vary by quite a bit, and I just wondered what the reason for that was. I, I don't know. I, we didn't bid it. They, it was done by a co-op. We've been a member of the co-op for years. They do, they do the bidding. Oh, I don't know the. Well, there seemed to be such a variation that one would wonder why the lower bidders, uh, you know, didn't get more of the contract or didn't get the contract. I guess we don't have the answer to that. I, know. I remember variations like 0.04 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, 0.4 cents per kilowatt hour versus eight cents. Or Could be time Stacey. of day. Yeah. Stacy, can you? It's the types of lighting? Yeah, different types of wattage and summer street lights, summer uh, building, 
somewhere on the stock markets. Aren't, aren't these for kilowatt hours? Though? Wasn't that what, what was being bid? It could be time of day. Could be time of day, you said? Good time of day rates could be. They, uh, certain times of day or in summer are different rates than the others. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Solicitor. I have no further report. Mr. Engineer. Yeah, Mayor and Committee, I have a, a number of items. The first is the uh, 2018 road program is officially out the bid. It's a very comprehensive uh, program, a lot of streets, a number of alternates. Um, so we're excited about that. Uh, we, hope, we hope we get very competitive prices. Bid opening for the road program will be September 11th, which is a week from today, next Tuesday morning. Um, the chiller bid, I, I actually worked on that, and um, I, I've added some stronger language to that, to the specifications, <coughs> and that is back out to bid, and that will be opened up also. Bid opening will be the 11th of September <coughs> for that also. Um, a couple other items I have, uh, construction projects. Um, Buffalo Pike is moving along very nicely. You see the steel's going up. Uh, speaking with Matt Oates, their construction manager, he said that they have uh, verbal commitments for the second building. They hope to, to uh, be under contract. And he, he's telling me maybe in as, as early as five weeks they could be applying for building permits for the second structure out there. Which Not all good. mattress stores. <laughs> 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 Three more mattress stores. Um, next item on my report is Parmar Liquor Store. Um, I've been speaking to the owner and he'd like to have a ribbon cutting ceremony. He's telling me the weekend of September 14th, which is either a Friday night or a Saturday, whichever the committee prefers. I, I could coordinate that with Mike and, and we can get that underway. He'll have a disc jockey there that night or that on that Saturday. So whoever gives me some information on what date is chosen at what time, I can help facilitate that. Okay. Next item is uh, Outback Steakhouse. They, uh, they mobilized on the site today, so construction is, is about to begin uh, immediately on, on Outback Steakhouse. Good. One other item that's not in my report is uh, Shore Toyota uh, just began their site work this, this past week also. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're adding handicap parking and, and a, a, con a pedestrian walkway from the, uh, the main facility out to the Black Horse Pike. And redoing the entrance as the big... Re redoing yeah. the entrance is going to be completely modernized and, and it'll, it'll match their, their highest current standards yeah. for the dealership. I seen those drawings at the planning board level, and they really did a great job with that. It looks very, very nice. It's, it's very state of the art with the lighting and the, and the uh, yeah. facade. Yes. Um, oh, Cedarcroft and Redwood. This, if you remember, about four or five months ago, there was a water main break at, at the intersection of, of yeah. at, uh, Cedarwood and uh, Redwood and Cedarcroft. All that work was completed by the MUA last Wednesday and Thursday, and it, it, it came out rather well. Uh, some of the neighbors that I've talked to out there, they, they're, very, they're very pleased with the, uh, they've had to suffer through, you know, this period of time, waiting for contracts to be prepared and bids, and, and this, they, they waited for the settlement of the, of the uh, saturated soils, but the neighbors out there seem to be very pleased. Very good. Uh, the municipal generator, we uh, uh, came to a, uh, a recommendation uh, on how to solve that um, there was a number of suggestions made by the contractor, Janny Electric and, and Cummins Power, who supplied the equipment. And we, we've come up with a, uh, a type of uh, three-part uh, epoxy sealant that's gonna be placed over top of where there's that indent at the top of the, of the tank. That work is supposed to start this coming week. So we're pleased with that. And at the recommendation of our solicitor, Mr. Sandman, we, we've gotten the uh, written acceptance from Cummins that, that this work will not affect the warranty on, on the uh, on the emergency generator. Um, two temporary street opening mm -hmm. permits were processed. And the last thing, um, I just wanted to offer um, on the, uh, out at the uh, Underhill Park on, on the storage trailer, I, I would like to volunteer my services and time. I could help, you know, help with making sure that this structure doesn't get placed in a low point where there's drainage. We could put some DGA under it. I, I could, be, you know, I could volunteer the services of Chris Carey in my office to help out with some landscape design. So wow. I, I would like to personally get involved. And, uh, you know, I got to know the guys at, at Underhill Park when I designed a bathroom. And 
I would love the chance to meet with them on my own time and, and, mm -hmm. and put together maybe a plan that we can submit and, and committee could look at something more concrete for next meeting. That's great. That's, That's great. why Thanks, we tabled Steve. that tonight to get more information like that, Steve. So thank you. That was a generous yep. offer. That is great, but I have a question for the solicitor. Are we allowed to accept gratuitous services? You have accepted them my office many times. Well, we can, we accept it from you, but... Yeah. We... <laughs> yes, you are. Well, that's interesting because, uh, in, at least in the federal government, we, we couldn't accept gratuitous services. He's donating his time to the MLAA. Okay. No that, is that the reason why? Yeah. That's one reason why. Okay. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Steve, I had a question real quick. Uh, have you heard anything from the county about the proposed work that was going to be done on that bridge down by Underhill where that house was flooded out so severely the people finally moved out they, they left you know I, you know I coordinated um, when we were doing the uh, I'm trying to think here pipe yeah we 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 coordinated the timing the paving you know. of the paving of um, on, on, you know Underhill Park but but the paving on Old Ink Harbor Road and the and, and the bridge further down by Cedarcroft, that's what it was. The, the timing of, of we, we wanted to make sure that wasn't closed at the same time we were doing a pipe sure. replacement at Cedarcroft. Because that was planned by the county at one it time. Supposed, and then, it was supposed to be in the, this summer, through this summer, and it was supposed to be okay. outside of when school buses were running through it. But I'll, I'll gotcha. call the county engineer. And the reason I ask is uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a high traffic area, people cutting through there. But one of the main reasons is while they're doing the bridge surface, and they have to take that bridge up to do the construction. Uh, we had wondered why couldn't they get down in there with a loader and dig out some of the remnants to make that more <coughs> passable for the water stream. Because I noticed that basically it was backing up and then going out onto the road rather than going through. So uh, we were hoping that we, we would be able to have some kind of discussion with the county on that when they actually came time to do the project instead of kicking the can down the road and have the same problem with the fixed surface of the bridge fixed and no water can get under it, you know? I, I will call the county engineer's office uh, and, and get a little more details in the timetable. Oh, uh, thanks, back. thank you. Okay. Uh, St uh, Steve, is there any um, additional information about 322 and it's uh, being paved? Is that by the state? Is there any additional information about that? Just that they're, they're they're doing some aerial photography right now, uh, and then once they have that data, then and I could try to find out more information. But they they've done some preliminary survey work and some setting up some aerial photography right now. Yeah, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Anything else, Steve? No, that concludes my report. Thank. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your help at the sure. park. Thank you. Uh, we're going to open it up to township committee members, Judy. Well, um, I just got back from a, a cruise down the Danube, and little did I know that they would be running out of water in order to have this cruise occur. <coughs> and I'm, I was reflecting back in 1970 when we ran out of water uh, at Lenape Park. And that was for three years. Now, I I really know that uh, the uh, the Viking crews took care of us going from one uh, ship to another. But I said, you know, you can never ever tell what is going to happen, uh, and we have to, you know. And I, I think we've done a good job reacting to all the different things that face our community. But I did tell uh, Michael um, that when we went to Nuremberg and we went to the, uh, they call it the rot house or the, the uh, place where you, you go to, you know, like our community has a township building it's all garish with gold. And I said, well, you, you, you got to meet up to these standards. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when I got back, I, I did go to the um, coffee with the cops. Inner tubes. 
and that was fantastic. I think it was very well received. I did meet uh, some people of our community. They were very happy to be there. And I, I just, you know, I am so happy with our police department because it is involving itself with the community, making sure that they that they know that they have a good uh, enforcement uh, um, you know, a group that really care about the community. And I think that came out. And that, uh, you know, I think I understand uh, Chief uh, Tapner was the one who suggested that or were. Started a while ago. Oh, Sorrentino. Well, I, I think they say he uh, is a strong proponent of the program. Okay, there we go. <laughs> And that's about it. Thank you, Judy. John? Sure. Uh, uh, there's a couple of things coming up uh, in town. Uh, Pre Fred Nebels, the president of the Merchants Association, couldn't make t here tonight. He has some physical issues, and uh, he's having them dealt with. But he asked me if I wouldn't uh, remind everybody that the wine festival for the Merchants Association is again at the... Uh, Lenape Park uh, at uh, on the 22nd and 23rd of September. Uh, everything's uh, coming together well for that. Uh, all the permits and everything we needed are are uh, pretty much handled, and it looks like it'll be a good event. Uh, anyone interested in attending, he said, can go on the uh, Merchants Association website and purchase their tickets. Uh, and also, some members in town will also have. Uh, those tickets available at their shops uh, for sale, and that'll be be uh, this Monday. We'll all we'll have s uh, three sites set up where you can get tickets. Uh, also, the uh, Senior Citizen Advisory Committee uh, had to move their uh, senior health fair out at the mall uh, because of the wine festival. They decided they would rather uh, move it to another weekend, and they chose the 29th Saturday, the 29th of September. Uh, and uh, if you remember last year, this was a great event. The mall was really happy with the results. It brought a lot of people out there for them uh, to visit the mall. And the seniors had a good time, too. It provides a lot of information uh, for seniors to uh, look into uh, at this event. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, other than that, uh, I think that's it, Mayor. Thank you, John. <coughs> Roger? Yeah, I, um, I think we have to... Um, congratulate Kevin Dixon for doing a great job on getting these grants. I think if you add the one from West Jersey and the one from Cantillion Boulevard, it comes to over $600,000. And that's, that's a lot of paving to be put down on the ground. That alone is, is significant. Um, next Tuesday, it's the 9-11 uh, Remembrance uh, Ceremony, 7 o'clock in War Memorial Park. Uh, every year it's, uh, it's a great turnout. Uh, it's not the numbers, it's the remembrance and the significance of the event. And I think everyone generally who comes out, they do support it. And um, I think it's something that uh, we've been doing for a long time and we're going to keep up with it. Um, Mitzvah had an automobile show, a car show, last Saturday. It was fantastic. I don't know if many of you like to see the different cars through the ages, but that over a hundred cars and um, um, the only disappointing thing about it is the heat was so intense uh, that you know that sun just burns uh, sucks the life out of you but they did have a good turnout and um, every year they have a one of our residents who uh, has an alpaca farm always brings down some of his young alpaca for the kids to see and uh, it's quite a treat so there was a lot going on over the last couple of weeks but uh, Hopefully, uh, hopefully this heat will let up and we'll have some uh, good enjoyment weather for a festival in the park. I, what's the next one in the park, uh, John, on the 15th? Art in the park? Art in the park, 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 yes. How could you forget Art. that? That's not you, Art. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, that's just uh, another event there, so that'll be good. So that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Rodney? Gee, I'm sorry to hear that I missed the alpacas when <laughs> I was out at the car show. I don't, I don't, I, you didn't I, see him off to the side? Uh, I didn't. He always has an area fenced in. 
Okay, I, I somehow I missed him. Well, I, I can tell you, I would like to you. He's always pat them. Up. He's always opened up on weekends, like in October, November. <clears throat> well, as as um, Roger said, uh, it was Excellent. an amazing number of cars out there, uh, and the, the car owners were just waiting for somebody to talk to them. They would, weren't they? <laughs> yes, they would. They they really enjoy what they're doing, and uh, they were they were looking forward to talking. One of the cars I saw out there, I thought was unbelievable. Which one was that? It was a Cadillac. Uh, my God, it was a Cadillac Brougham. Oh, it must yeah. have been 21 feet long. It was red, yeah. uh, and it had uh, beautiful uh, leather interior. Absolutely beautiful. The 98 Oldsmobile too was just as long. Uh huh. And he was asking ten thousand dollars for it, which I thought was a bring your check reasonable <laughs> price. <laughs> of course, I don't know what garage you could put it in. The thing just looked like you looked gigantic. Um, over the, uh, the past couple of weeks, I I attended a uh, <clears throat> uh, National Act of Retired Federal Employees uh, Association uh, convention uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. And the interesting, you know, after traveling all that time, you're looking forward to re relaxing. When we pulled up to the to the motel, which is which is a Hyatt Regency, very nice hotel. You could see, all you could see were police cars and sirens and ambulances. Well, it turns out that there was 11 people were shot huh. and four were killed, just a stone's throw away from the uh, from the hotel. So we were advised not to go out and et cetera, et cetera. And then to top that off, a few days before that, or maybe it was a week before that, there were some other deaths at a high school game. Uh, I tell you, it's really really a shame. Uh, one thing about the conference, though, that I think is worth sharing, there, there were over 700 people there. These are civil service employees, uh, across the board civil service jobs, that are people that actually run the government. And uh, I think uh, the attending there was a real source of pride. One of the people who spoke was uh, Mike Massimino, who uh, was an astronaut. And, I mean, he had so many accomplishments that you couldn't even believe it. But he was just completely awed and enthralled and inspired by, by the work they, the government, NASA, the fellow employees did. And uh, the, the uh, people, I don't think, are aware or, of how much uh, the civil service contributes to the uh, continued operation of this government machine. Uh, with all the stuff going on, they're really dependent on to keep things going. Um, I hope everybody had a pleasant Labor Day and first day at school. Uh, one of the other things that occurred during, uh, during this uh, week was uh, um, Senator McCain's funeral. I don't know how many of you had a chance to see that, but if you can, that was on the, uh, uh, probably on uh, YouTube, but it was worth viewing. It's just, um, I mean, I have a lot more respect for him. I had respect for him before, but him and the country and the goals of the country, it was, it was, I thought it was worthwhile. Unfortunately, we, uh, one of the things that happened is the gas price increases. What is it, 4% or 4.3% or something? That's uh, unfortunate, but 4.3 cents. I guess, I guess it's needed and maybe uh, we'll end up having some part of it, uh, additional part of it ourselves. Got it. Um, just want to, uh, the uh, VFW uh, got a, uh, was, um, someone gave them a, a couple of wheelchairs and they donated a wheelchair to, uh, to the township. Uh, and, um, that is something that uh, we may be able to use from time to time. I do know some people who come here and they really could use a wheelchair. So uh, <laughs> the administrator worked with them to get that here. It's here now and uh, just so that you're aware of it. That's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Roddy. <clears throat> um, Steve, just one thing. When you meet up with the folks from the MLAA, if you could give me a call, if I could come out there, I'd like to take a look at that. And there's some other things that yeah, I, would too. Um, Thank you. I was out at the games over the weekend. And I think there's some other things that we need to address. And I'd like to get your opinion on okay. that. So if you don't mind, Absolutely. appreciate that. Sure. Thank you. Uh, well, I'd also like to thank, you know, Kevin Dixon does a great job bringing, bringing in that kind of money for mm -hmm. fixing our roads in this town is, is, is quite a relief. It, it will push our road program, so to speak, to another level, um, opening up a lot more uh, the abilities to do more, which is what we always try to do. But 
as you realize, we work with a limited budget every year, and uh, we try to get the most done for the least amount of money. Uh, one last thing, I'd just like to encourage everybody to come to the 9-11 Remembrance. It's really a wonderful ceremony. I am very proud to be part of it, and uh, believe me, you will not be disappointed. The folks that put that on, Reverend Ash and his group, do a fantastic job, and um, it, it's, it's worth your time, and it's a, good, it's a good thing that we do every year. With that, I want to open it up to public comment. Anybody in the public like to speak? Come on up. I know I'm a familiar face. Yep, come on. Um, first of all, I do want to thank Steve but about helping me with my house as much as he could. Problem is he's conflicted out. I really have no point of contact now with the township in helping me with my current situation. Um, I know Steve had some conversations with my engineer that I have hired uh, who still takes all the data from the well that I have in front of my house and calculates and everything else. Um, I know you're all praising Kevin Dixon and I'm not trying to rain on his parade, but I found him not to be so receptive to me talking to him and I know he's the one that's been handling uh, the Fernmore Basin. Um, I have lots of questions that nobody can answer, such as who actually owns it, if it's the homeowners or and stuff and I've asked Kevin in the past if they've had to submit anything and I just got my Oprah requests back and I'm kind of disappointed I've been a resident of Hamilton Township since 2001 I chose to move here from Egg Harbor Township um, I don't really come in complain or do too much of anything I try to keep quiet on my uh, little slice of land but <clears throat> apparently Fernmore has had to put in plans for a lot of this stuff I have never been advised of anything and I don't think that I have the right to be advised, even if I do something on my property, I have to advise them, kind of an odd thing. But at any rate, I want some, I guess, uh, some communication with the township. I know I can't talk to Steve, but to give you an example, my engineer has proved with the, with the data from my well that when they tore out all that vegetation and did everything yesterday, <coughs> last year, they've raised my water against my house. They've also raised the constant water table up to a higher level. So I don't know who to address this with. Um, I have been complaining, just so you all know, to the township since 2005, since the first flood, and this is just getting progressively worse. I couldn't sell my house now if I wanted to. I feel trapped in Hamilton Township, and I shouldn't feel that way. I should enjoy living here and wanting to be here and you know, participating in stuff. Um, I just don't feel that way anymore because I honestly feel like a lot of the stuff that's been done and approved for them. I know that there are certain guidelines, but I feel like the, the lone resident that I need a lifesaver or you know a life vest to be thrown out to me in, in the form of help from the township because the basin still doesn't drain in three days. I haven't seen them do any new work to it, and it's been almost a year since they did that work that is now creating me more issues. I went from having five inches of water in my basement to almost a foot. Um, I've tried to reach out to Fern Moore and do the right thing. Um, I'm just getting nowhere and I don't know what else to do and I've listened to the residents of Tavistock that have come in here and told me to keep coming in keep showing my face and mm -hmm. keep being a broken record I don't like being a broken record I'm a cop I like to go out and as you can talk to any cop we like to fix things we like to respond do what we got to do and move on and know that we made a difference and helped um, I've been struggling for the last 13 years okay. and I don't know what else to do um, I'd like to know who my point of contact could be or would be since Steve can't and I totally understand that um, and I, I respect that and I've got to say I do appreciate everything he does for the, for the township because he even called me back and told me he was forthright but he's the only one from the township that's really called me back that's okay. been an engineer here all right so first of all Steve thank you for doing that and, cool. and I know a lot of that was on your own and um, we I wasn't aware that that this had come to a, an end. So, Michael, I want to know where this young lady goes next. Well, I, Somebody I need here. some advice from, from Bob, whether we get involved or not. I, I need to talk to Bob about that. Okay. You know where to find me. Okay. All right. Do you have her contact information so you can let her know what? I know where she lives. You know where I live. I, I've, I've offered this to Kevin before. I'll give you all the data that's from my well. I have nothing to hide. I, you know, I want you guys to see that that basin is destroying my house. And my neighbor's having more issues, by the way. He just couldn't make it tonight um, ever since that repair that they did. We're having worse issues. So 
Uh, I'll give you guys whatever you need, and I'll give you guys my phone number. Um, Steve, actually, I don't know if he still has it, but whatever help the township can help me in just getting them to get this thing to drain right and maybe putting some pressure on them. I mean, it's been a year since the last thing, and it doesn't drain in three days like it's supposed to, and that's a state law. Like, it's supposed to drain in 72 hours. It hasn't drained in 72 hours since day one that they've built that. Yeah, basins are great, we know. Oh, yeah. All right, well, um, can we have a conversation? And then we'll get back to you Perfect. on where I we can go from that. here. I appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Anyone else in the public like to speak? <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Bruce Stry, for the record. Uh, on 7C, seven, uh, seven your discussion about the um, uh, shipping container. Mm. Uh, first of all, as a member of the zoning board, I have no opinion on the merits of uh, uh, for or against. But my question uh, is the authority of the township committee uh, to uh, grant a, the, an approval for the placement. Uh, uh, these trailers are not permitted by ordinance in Hamilton Township. So I have to question respectfully uh, your authority to grant what would be a variance a, a land use variance to uh, the property is your property mm -hmm. uh, township property and any uh, landowner um, has the ability to go before the zoning board and request a variance so it's just my question only is a uh, an authority uh, of the township committee to grant what would be a, uh, a variance for a structure that is not permitted so that, that's my only concern. I believe this is one of the reasons why we asked for more information. Yeah, I wasn't right. clear on what exactly they were trying to do here. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, and, you know, Bob had suggested, or I can't remember, Steve, Bob, somebody suggested we, you know, get a little site plan, see what they want to do here before yeah. we. But we ultimately, move I, I don't know here. that, and, and this is a legal question, I'm not an attorney, but Immediate. based on my experience, a non permitted. A structure okay. requires a some kind of a variance. So thank you. That's all right. What we to thank you thank for you. bringing that to our attention. You mind if I ask a question on that? Maybe a, a Bob. Um, it is uh, township property. It uh, is. We required to go through the same uh, the, the same uh, requirements as a with very few exceptions. With very few exceptions. Okay. All right. Good. Now whether this is a temporary structure causes this law to apply or that law to mm -hmm. apply, I don't know. I'm learning about it tonight for the first time. Yep, me too. But I will be in a position to advise you. Okay. If it's necessary. Great. Well, let's have the conversation and, and find out what they're looking to do, exactly what they're looking to do, <clears throat> and then we'll go from there. Okay? Very good. Anyone else in the public like to speak? Move to close the public portion. <clears throat> second. Second. A motion and second to close the public portion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion for adjournment is in order. So moved. Second. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it.